David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. I was recently contacted by a company based in the UK by the name of Wingback. They were going to be releasing a new fountain pen via Kickstarter and wanted to know if I would care to check it out. I'm generally down to check out anything new, so I agreed. So today I will be going over the parts and features of this new pen. I'll talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, this wouldn't be their first Kickstarter project. Uh, they had previously released some uh, mechanical pens and a mechanical pencil. Uh, the pen arrived in this tube, which in its own right is kind of neat. It kind of looks like a chunky pen. Uh, and then the way the ends are, it kind of reminded me of a model rocket engine, except for it doesn't have the distinct smell inside. Uh, inside, we have a small canvas sleeve, uh, and then inside that, we have the pen. Uh, and this is the Wingback Fountain Pen. It doesn't have a fancy name, it simply describes what it is, a fountain pen. Uh, this one here is the stainless steel model, but it is also available in brass, titanium, as well as a tungsten carbide coated black steel. The pen is made in England and finished in their London workshop. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the parts and features of this pen. The top of the cap is flat with a beveled edge. This pen is clipless. At the end of the cap, it is engraved with the company name. Uh, the company describes this engraving as done with a pulse fiber laser. I'm uncertain whether that type of laser essentially burns the black into the engraving or if that coloring was added later, but it looks nice and it helps the lettering stand out. The barrel is straight until it transitioned to the knurled middle section, which then transitions into the barrel, which is again straight. And at the end, we have some narrow posting threads. The cap twists off with four and a half rotations, uh, which is a bit much. Now, this is just a minor thing, but with this knurled middle section, my natural inclination is to hold the cap and twist the barrel and the section. And in doing so, you're basically spinning the nib around uh, inside the cap. If you happen to be a bit aggressive with your spinning, you could you know, potentially expel some ink out. I haven't experienced this, but in theory, that's just a possibility. So it's something just to be aware of. But once you remove the cap, underneath we have a number five box stainless steel nib. Uh, Bach calls this their type 180 nib. It's available in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, or double broad. And here's a look at the plastic feed. Uh, as you saw previously, the section is knurled. I am a big fan of knurled sections, so this one works well for me. Uh, you can see the cap threads are at the end of the nib. Uh, if this were a slicker section, that would bother me because my grip would potentially slip off the end a bit and onto those threads, but that's not the case with this knurling. Uh, your grip is not going anywhere. Uh, and the application is long enough to a quarter to, in order to accommodate a number of grip styles. Um, this pen is just barely long enough to use unposted if you need to jot down a quick note. I will say that the posting threads are a bit sharp and dig into the side of my hand when using this pen unposted, so I prefer to use this pen posted. Uh, the cap twists to post on those threads, and I haven't experienced any issues with cross-threading or anything like that. Um, the post threads aren't as long as the capping threads, so it only takes two rotations to post and unpost. Uh, this pen does have a decent amount of heft to it, more than you would think a pen of this small, uh, this small and thin would have, but it feels very well balanced in the hand. Uh, this pen accepts standard international cartridges. Uh, there are some small converters that would work with this as well, but the performance of those small converters is uh, spotty at best, and the ink capacity is not that great. Uh, it would be best to use cartridges or refill cartridges with the ink of your choosing. Now, on their Kickstarter campaign, they do have a campaign video. 
It looks nice, uh, but there were a couple of things I wanted to point out. Uh, they described this pen as having a wide diameter barrel to help reduce writing fatigue. Um, I th I, maybe they're talking more about the section than the barrel itself, because at a little under 10 millimeters, the barrel is very thin. It's only slightly larger in width than a Caveco Lilliput, which is a very thin pen. Now, the knurled section is essentially the same width, and 10 millimeters for a section is fairly average, if not on the smaller side of average. Nothing I would describe as a wide diameter, but I wouldn't categorize that as a major issue. Um, I did have more of an issue with an instruction they provided. They recommended using this pen as an eyedropper. Uh, generally speaking, it's not advisable to eyedropper a metal pen since the ink will start wearing away the metal over time. It might not be noticeable at first, but after a while the corrosion will become more evident. Uh, some metals are prone to corrosion more than others. Uh, stainless steel and brass tend to be less corrosive than copper and aluminum. Uh, there are other factors involved as well, like your choice of ink. Um, the pH factor of inks is a major factor. The lower the pH, the more acidity the ink will have. Uh, something like the Pelican 4001 Blue Black has a pH of 2.1, which would be one to avoid in this situation. Uh, an ink like Lamy Obsidian might be safer, which has a pH of 7.6. Uh, water has a pH of 7. So an ink closer to that should, in theory, be reasonably safe. But inks don't really put pH factors on the side of their bottles. So you might have a metal and ink combination which will be fine, or you might have one that will cause damage to your pen, which is why eye dropping a metal pen is generally frowned upon. Okay. In regard to price, the stainless steel and brass versions are a little under $120, depending on the pounds to dollars exchange rate. Then the black as well, as the titanium models, are about $170. Uh, there is also an option on the campaign to purchase the entire set at a reduced rate than the individual models themselves. You can see all of the details on the campaign page, uh, and I'll put a link to it in the notes below this video. I believe the campaign is only open for about another week, the day that I'm posting this video. So if you like this pen, you would want to take action sooner rather than later while the campaign is still open. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the wingback fountain pen. Uh, you know what, something I wanted to clarify. When I was saying that uh, normally with this knurling, you're going to spin this and the chance of expelling some ink is higher. I think mainly it's, I know that I, I end up doing that and opening that with a lot of pens, but since this pen is so thin, I just thought that the velocity that you're spinning it at just is kind of increased. So uh, like I said, it's just a, a minor nit to pick and I haven't seen any issues with it, but just something I, I thought that I wanted to at least bring up. But in regard to some size comparisons, I wanted to kind of show you some other pens in this general range. Um, this is what it looks like with a Caveco Lilliput. Uh, and then this is what it looks like with the Shone Design Ultim. Uh, and then here it is with a Caveco Skyline Sport. Here it is with another Shone Design pen. This is the Pocket 6. Uh, and then this is the Inso Minimalista, or Minimista? Minimalista, yeah, that's what it's called. And then finally, here it is with a Twisby Vac Mini. Rather than an uncapped comparison, let's show it posted, since most of the time you're going to be using this posted. And it pretty much turns into a uh, full-size pen when it's posted. Uh, this is what it is in comparison to the Lilliput. Um, here it is with the uh, Shone Design Pocket 6. And finally, here it is with the Caveco Skyline Sport. Okay, here we go with the Wingback Fountain Pen. Okay. 
Now, uh, Bach nibs don't have a, uh, a size on here. I'm, I'm thinking this is a medium. It might be a broad, but it's uh, definitely not a fine. So I'm gonna call this a medium, but it could be a broad. Um, but the ink flow on it is very nice. And uh, the ink is the cartridge that came with it, which is just a, a generic black cartridge. So we will just call this generic black. In regard to the rest of the writing sample, Um, I find this nib to be very smooth. Um, uh, that Bach nibs have a tendency not to be my favorite. Or I, I prefer Yovos over Bach's, uh, but this one is actually very nice. It's very smooth and might be one of the smoother Bach nibs that I've tested out. Um, you're not going to get a lot of line variation. You can push it a bit, but you can see that it railroaded a little bit. In regard to ink flow, this nib is very generous. Uh, in regard to some reverse writing, It does a good job laying down an extra, extra fine line and it isn't too sharp in regard to some fast writing. The feed keeps up very well. So there we have the Wingback Fountain Pen. Um, you, I'll put a link to the Kickstarter project in the notes below. Um, it's an interesting pocket pen. I kind of call it a pocket pen because uh, it doesn't have a clip on it. And uh, it, it's something that you would, you know, keep in your jeans pocket or something like that. And the material is something that's going to take a beating. So you could really use this as an everyday pen. But if you're interested, check out the campaign uh, that is ending in a week or so when I post this. So uh, if you're interested, you might want to take a look at it sooner rather than later. Until next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.